thanks for joining me. My name is Lisa Tabor. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Ontario, Canada. It's a beautiful sunny day um, after the wicked little rainstorms we've had for the last couple of days. So today uh, I'm going to share with you um, a technique that uh, I did for my monthly swap with my team and this was my swap card. And I'm going to show you how we did this. It's very, actually very, very quick, but a lot of fun to do. And I'll just show you a couple of the swap cards that I've received um, from some of my team members. We don't have a large team. Um, there's only a few of us, but we're growing slowly and um, would welcome anyone to join our team. Uh, we have a lot of fun and um, great, great bunch of girls. So this first card is from my friend and uh, co-worker, actually, Susan, uh, who's also part of my team. She works with us at the quilt shop as well as she's part of my Critters and Ink Designs team. And so for this one, she used uh, a coordinating um, product from Celebration, and it, there was a, a DSP that was available for a very short time that coordinated with the punches that were in the spring catalog. And so this paper was called um, Please Just Punch. And it was only available for, I don't know, like a month or something. And um, so all these papers coordinated with the different punches that were available during that those few months. Now some of these punches are still available. The floral one is still available and the build an umbrella one is still available. And actually so actually they're all available. So the tulip one is in the tulip builder and the heart is part of the heart um, bundle. There's two punches for the heart one. Um, one is scalloped and one is plain and this matches with the plain um, hearts. And uh, so she used this DSP for her card. And this paper is really fun. So if you did get it during the celebration, you know, dig it out and use it. It's as cute as anything. So that was the card from Susan. And then this one, this one is from um, another Susan who is in Eastern Ontario. And she's part of my downline, but she's also part of my family. She's my sister-in-law. And for this one, she used um, the stamp set To a Wild Rose. And where is that? So To a Wild Rose. So this is a multi-step um, stamp. And you can see here that it's one of the distinctive stamps. And so what they mean by distinctive is that it's like um, dimensional. And um, so you would stamp the outline first and then you fill it in uh, using different layers um, with lighter, lighter um, inks to get your dimension. Isn't that gorgeous? Beautiful. Okay, and then the third one I'm going to show you. This is from my very dear friend Doreen, who is also on my team. And she's in Southern Ontario. And so this one was done with, um, I always forget the name of this one, but it's beautiful, uh, Bloom and Grow. And so she used this floral uh, element from the Bloom and Grow, as well as some of these. And you can see anything outlined in gray, shaded in gray, means that there's a coordinating dye to go with it. And then she used the You Are Simply Wonderful sentiment and um, stamp that and use the silver embossing pa uh, powder to go with it as well as the seaside spray um, glitter ribbon on the um, on the front of the card isn't that gorgeous beautiful beautiful so those were some of the cards that came for my swap and um, so this is the card that I'm going to be doing and this was my card for the swap. So I hope you like it. Let's get started. So for my card, I did, I used the, um, I forget what page it's on. Let me see if I can find it. 
It is called Beauty Abounds. Beauty Abounds on page 77. So the Beauty Abounds stamp set is this, but it last year was um, bundled with the um, Butterfly Beauty die, uh, die set. See if I can find it here, and that's on page um, 180. But the stamp set is on page 77 that I just showed you. Now we're not going to use the stamps today. We are going to use uh, this die right here. I don't know if you can see that. So we're just going to use that die. But first, what we're going to do is create our background. Oh, so while I have the catalog out, I'm just going to quickly go over a couple of things. For the month of June, June of 2020, there is a joining promotion. If you choose a starter kit to join my team, you not only get $165 worth of product for $135 Canadian with free shipping, um, and a free paper pumpkin, you will also get to choose a bundle for free out of the current catalog. And I mean any bundle that you like. So what a bundle is, is a stamp set bundled with either um, a punch or a set of dies. So if you look in the catalog, you will always see the bundles uh, now let me see if they have bun a bundle page. So the bundles, so here we are. The bundles, die bundles, start on page 173. So what a bundle means is that when they have a new uh, set of stamps and matching dies, if it's a new set, they'll bundle them together so that you can get 10% off um, when you purchase both pieces together. So there's several that you can choose from and you get to choose any one that you want. So the those are the die bundles and then there are punch bundles as well. I don't know if they have the punch bundles on here. Oh here they are. So the punch bundles are die sets or not die sets, stamp sets that go with a punch. So there's the jar of flowers goes with the jar of punch. The um, posted for you bundle includes the posted for you stamps and the rectangular postage stamp bundle. The field of flowers is bundled with the confetti flowers border um, punch. Heartfelt bundle is um, bundled with the heart pack punches. So you get two punches there actually. You get the scalloped heart and the plain heart. And when you buy both pieces together, the, the um, heartfelt stamp set and the two bundles, or the two um, punches together, then you save 10%. And that's the same with the whale done, tombless, tombless tulips, <laughs> timeless, timeless tulips. Uh, fancy phrases, you get the fancy tank topper um, punch, and then the lovely you bundle with the lovely you stamp set and the lovely labels pick a punch. So this this is actually a really cool. Um, let me grab mine. I'll just show it to you. So this is the um, lovely labels pick a punch. So you can put several different sizes of paper. I don't know if this will fit in there. Yeah, so this one fits in here, and then you, but you can, it has three different sizes on both sides, so you just slide this in. Until you get to the end, make sure it's straight, and then punch it, and then you have a little label. Isn't that neat? So it's got three different ones, and the smaller the paper, the different the design will be just a little bit on each of the two sides. So this this punch set is very, very versatile. So um, yeah, so for the month of June, 
from June 3rd to June 30th to if you decide that you would like to join my team, not only do you get everything else that I described earlier, but you also get to pick any bundle. So it's a fabulous promotion. So um, yeah, you definitely want to look into that. If you have any questions about that, feel free to email me at critersandink at gmail.com or go on to my critersandink.com website and there's a contact me button there. You can just get in touch with me. And I'll be happy to um, answer any of your questions. So to make this card, you're going to need your card base, which I'm using um, Bermuda Bay today, and three pieces of Whisper White at five and a quarter by four. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to um, emboss it with, I'm going to dry emboss it with the Tasteful Textile 3D embossing folder. This is new in this, in this new catalog. I'm just going to run this through my Big Shot and I'll be right back. Okay, so here is my embossed paper. And that's just going to go right on my card base. So I'm using the new stamp and seal. This is a new adhesive that just came out with a new catalog and I actually really like it. Um, it's not as finicky as the Fast Fuse was. Uh, and I think it's, it's just, to me, a little bit nicer um, of an adhesive uh, than the Snail was. I do like the Snail, but I, I like this one a little bit better. For me, it just runs a little bit smoother and I really like it. So now we're going to create the, I was going to say the fabric. I own a fabric shop. So now I'm going to create the colors for my, um, my butterflies. So I'm going to be using Calypso Coral, Highland Heather, Bumblebee, which is a new color this June, and Coastal Cabana. So I'm going to start with my Calypso Coral. I'm going to use my sponges. Now these are stained, but you watch, you can wash them. They'll still look stained, but they'll be clean. And then this one's looking a little sketchy, so I think I will just grab an, a new one. And they come in packages of three. And I just cut them into fours or sixes, depending what I'm doing. There, so I'm going to start with the Calypso Coral and a piece of the Whisper White cardstock that is again um, five, uh, five, five, yeah, wait, five and a quarter by four. Good grief. Okay, so I'm just going to grab my sponge and load it up. Now, when you're doing this, you want to start off, you don't want to start right on your um, cardstock because it'll kind of leave a smudgy mess. So I always kind of get the excess off and then I just work my way onto, onto my cardstock and then I just build up the color. There, that looks nice. I gotta close this because I don't know about you, but I managed to get ink all over me all the time. Okay, and now I'm going to do the Highland Heather. So what I do generally, I never make just one card. I'll usually make several at a time. And just, you know, keep your sponges separate because if you do put one into a different color and the other first color is darker, you will transfer color into your um, ink, which you really kind of don't want to do. I'm going to use, I think 
I'll use this die. So these dies again are called um, Beauty, Buddy, Buddy, Butterfly Beauty. There's 20 dies in the um, in the set, and there I think I'm good. Which way am I gonna go? I'll run it through like that. Just give me two seconds. I'll just run this through the uh, big shot and I'll be right back. Okay, so there is there are my butterflies all cut out. And I'm going to use my attachment for my take my pick, take your pick to them which is a little detailed brush. So that just screws on to where you have your jewel picker. That just pops off. This just screws on. And so what this does is it helps you to get all of the little bits out of your butterflies. And it comes with this little spongy pad. And I keep it in a box so that I don't have tons of paper dust everywhere, which, you know what, I do anyway, but. I think this just minimizes it a bit. There we go. And there is my butterfly. You can hear one of my cats meowing in the background there. pieces here. There's one. There, beautiful. So I just keep this box down here and then when it gets kind of full of paper, little scrappy things, I just Give it a dump out and start all over again. All right. So I can put this back. Okay, so I'm going to cut out this one butterfly. I don't want this one butterfly. If it's the page wasn't big enough for him and I need somewhere to put my sentiment so I'm gonna get rid of that guy and <clears throat> that's it so now I can start assembling my card I'm gonna grab some dimensionals I'm just gonna use the little ones today and um, this little as I said this card goes together really quickly in spite of how much um, detail there is on it. I can hear my cat. I don't know if she wants to go out or if she thinks it's dinner time. I have no idea. I never skimp with my dimensionals. I like, hi Roxy, what's wrong? Oh, I know. Um, I never skimp with the dimensionals. I, I, I like the dimension. I like having everything popped up and supported, especially if you're gonna pop something in the mail, you wanna make sure that um, it's going to survive the trip. So, um, yeah, be generous with your dimensionals. They're not expensive, and um, for me, they just really finish off the project. You get a lot in a package, so, um, you know, it's okay to be generous. You're not being frivolous. You're putting a lot of work into your project, and you want it to survive, so. That's how I feel. I don't know if everybody feels the same way I do, but I don't really care. <laughs> so 
It's all preference, right? Just like everything. Personal preference. <laughs> okay. So I've cut some of these dimensionals in half, so I'm going to put some half ones down here on the smaller guy. So we haven't opened our quilt shop right up yet. I'm still a bit nervous. So we're still only open two days a week. And then there's a long weekend and the July 1st weekend um, for Canada Day. So we'll open up after that for our regular, um, our regular days that we had before the pandemic. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it'll be okay. Um, what, Roxy? Oh my goodness, go tell dad. There, I think that's probably good. I'm just gonna cut one more in half here. What's up, Pussycat? under my desk head butting my feet as if to say come on upstairs and feed me there I know that looks like overkill to some people but oh there's Georgie okay where you go scoot I have two cats here and it's getting close to dinner time so they're getting awfully needy You see the shadow in the window there. Georgie just jumped up on the windowsill. Uh, some of you may have seen the video of her trying to sit in a paper pumpkin box not long ago. Um, she didn't quite manage to get her butt in there, but she still had a nap in there, even though her butt was hanging out of the box. If you go back to one of my other videos, you'll actually see it. It's really cute. There, I think I got all the papers off of those guys. Oh, there's one. Okay. These guys are sticky. There, okay. Finally, okay, so I'm just going to lay this on top of here. I guess I missed the paper on that one. There, beautiful. Okay, so then what I did is I took my um, shimmer paint. And so what the shimmer paint is, let me just grab one, I'll show you. So the shimmer paint comes in these little containers. And um, currently, you can still get the frost white and champagne. And the champagne is like a little bit of, it's not gold really, but it's just a little bit not white. It's actually very pretty. And you can hear there's a little ball in there. And what you want to do is just shake the daylights out of it until make sure that all the little shimmers are really well blended. Now I still have some in here, so I'm not going to um, to make it, like to add to it. But what you do is you fill your, your spritz, um, your spritzer about three quarters of the way full, and then you just put a couple of really good drops into your, um, into the receptacle here, and then just shake it very, very well to get all of the shimmer distributed. And um, you have an alcohol-based little shimmer paint that you just spritz onto your paper. So I'm just going to give this a little quick spritz. Try not to get myself in the face. 
and you don't need much. I'm not sure if you can see that shimmer, but it's actually very shimmery. There you can see my finger is all shimmery. And that's it. That's all there is to that. It's so, so simple. And it dries quickly because it's alcohol based. And you just use rubbing alcohol that you get at the dollar store at, for, at the drugstore and um, create your little um, shimmer mist. The I'll show you quickly in the catalog the little spritz spritzers. So the shimmer paints are on page 147. Each little jar is uh, $11 Canadian and there's frost white and champagne mist. And then the, um, where are the spritzers? The Stampin' Spritzers are uh, $4 for a package of two. And that's the, um, these, these guys. So it's two dollars each. They come in a package of two for four dollars Canadian. So it's pretty good, um, pretty good price. And this shimmer paint, you won't need very much. As I say, you just use two drops. Big drops, mind you, but still. I've had mine for, um, oh my gosh, over a year. And the jar is like mostly full still. So, and I use it quite a bit. Okay, so that's that part. And then for my sentiment, I just used a piece of black scrap. And I'm actually going to use the thanks from one of the new stamp sets. This is from, um, which one is this one from? Well, it's not a new one. It's uh, Good Morning Magnolia. It's not a new one. I don't know why I thought it was new. But the Good Morning Magnolia came out last year. And um, I, I really like the font on this, so I use it actually quite a bit. And so what I'm using here is a um, an embossing buddy. And what it is is like a little powder puff. Now, the embossing buddy has been discontinued in this catalog. But I know that myself and several other demonstrators have uh, indicated to Stampin' Up! that we would like it brought back. Um, and what it does is it deposit, you can see there's a little bit of a powder there. It deposits a bit of powder onto your cardstock so that when you're uh, using the embossing powder, which you melt with a heat tool, you're not going to get um, crazy remnants of the embossing powder where you don't want it. It acts like it reduces the um, any kind of static electricity or any of the oils off your fingers. And so for the ink, I'm using Versamark, which is kind of a, like a gluey kind of an ink. It's clear. You can use it for watermarking if you want to, or you can use, it works as the glue for the embossing powder, which we're going to do next. So I'm just gonna pop that on here. Now you wanna be careful that you don't rock your stamp because if you have ink on the side of your stamp and you rock it, you could have a little halo. So you can see it there. That's what I mean by watermarking. So it's the same, um, you know, it hasn't changed the color of the paper at all, but it is um, a clear stamp. So I'm gonna get that out of the way and I'm gonna bring in my white, um, I'm just gonna grab a piece of scrap paper. And I'm just gonna sprinkle my white embossing powder over that Versamark ink. Beautiful. Okay, and then I'm just gonna pop this back in the jar. So this stuff lasts forever. You, you just keep popping back what you haven't used into your jar. And, um, I've been using this little jar for months and it just seems to go on and on. So now I'm gonna grab my heat tool, sorry for the noise, and I'm going to melt that, paper, that powder 
and this is called heat embossing. There, you can see it's starting to change color. Beautiful. Okay, I'm just gonna let that cool for a second and I'm going to fussy cut out the word thanks. So I'm just gonna go around and just leave like, you know, 16th of an inch. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is a handmade treasure, not stamped out from you know, some machine that's doing a billion of them at a time. Handmade treasures are allowed to be not perfect. Now, someone told me years ago when I first started sewing that there's a big difference. Somebody in one of the classes I was taking said handmade and the instructor lost her marbles and said there's a big difference between handmade and homemade. Oh no, she said it was homemade. And she said, oh yeah, there's a huge difference between handmade and homemade. There. Beautiful. Let's get rid of this. And again, I'm going to pop this up on dimensionals. And there are, actually, I should be using a black dimensional. There are black dimensionals, which I have, except I put them somewhere safe and, you know, how that goes. Actually, they're in my drawer. There. And there's my card. Is that straight? Not perfect, but it's okay. And there we have, that's my card. And then on the inside, I took one of the little butterflies from in here. Just grab a block. And I'm going to use Coastal Cabana because my um, card base is Coastal Cabana. So I'm just going to grab my little butterfly. I'm going to stamp him off once. Oh. And put them on my card, my little card here. And I learned a long time ago that stamp it before you glue it, just to save yourself some heartache. Because I've had to pick out a few of them, and they don't always pick out the nicest. If you make a boo boo by stamping it on the inside, and it doesn't turn out well. If you stamp it here and it smudges, you can flip it over. You know, but if you've glued it already, you can't. That's a lost battle right there. So I'm just gonna pop this inside the card. And there you have it. Um, and I've mentioned before that I, I actually don't put a sentiment on the inside. Um, in case I, you know, depending on who the person is, I'll choose something that suits that person. So there's my card, quick and easy. Oh, you know what? I'm missing the bling. Let's get on that. Let's see, what do I put on there? Oh, these are pretty. These are new, elegant faceted gems. They come in clear, white, and like a um, champagne -y color. So let's try these. I just got these the other day, so I'm pretty excited to try them out. I think I'll just do clear though. Oh, maybe I'll do white. White on white should be okay. Oh, they kind of don't. Yeah, they're okay. I'm gonna grab my take a pick to them part here. So you can see there's a little putty end there. I just grabbed, oh, cat hair is free. 
A card without cat hair isn't a good card. Okay, I'm just gonna pop that right there. And maybe one over here. And there's the card, isn't that pretty? So, so simple and so, so quick, really. So there's my swap card for my team that I sent out this month. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making them. And um, I look forward to showing you next month. And that was my technique. I think I'll start doing a technique Tuesday. Hopefully that flies. I have to discipline myself because I'm, I'm just pulling myself between um, so many different things right now. Um, time's a little bit tight. As you can see, you haven't seen me for a few weeks. So um, I'm glad to be back crafting and paper uh, sharing. Um, I really missed it. So again, I hope you enjoyed this. And um, if you saw anything in this video that you think you can't live without, feel free to go to my website, crittersinink.com, and please use June's host code um, if you order prior to June the 30th. Uh, if your order is over 200, don't use that because um, Stampin' Up! will have rewards for you uh, when you place your order. Okay, if you have any questions about that, feel free to get in touch with me, crittersinink.com or crittersinink at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon and stay out of the rain. Bye for now.